Hello, this is Islama today for Think Tech Hawaii. In today's episode, we're going to be speaking about art and creativity. I'm your host, Hamza Rifat Hussain, and today we're going to be speaking to journalist and author Mahin Osmani on what she feels about the status of art and creativity in the country, as, and as well, whether or not art and creativity can actually have a positive or negative impact on social change within the country. Mahin Osmani, thank you so much for joining me on the show. Hamza, thank you for having me on your show. All right, Mahim, so let's start off with a very basic question here. What do you think is the status of arts and creativity in the country? Do you think there needs to be significant improvement? Is there mediocrity or is it a bit of both? I think uh, th there are very few exceptions to the general rule of mediocrity, which reigns in Pakistan, where literary arts is concerned. And it is not something that is confined only to the arts. You see every institution is suffering from mediocrity, whether it's uh, the bureaucrats that we see. My father was a bureaucrat and I re we were just talking the other day with my family and some other people who uh, that the uh, kind of bureaucrats you had in those days, maybe when our parents were you know thriving in their careers, they, it was a completely different uh, setup, completely different standard. So I would say that there's mediocrity, which is uh, spread everywhere in Pakistan, and the literary arts, unfortunately, is not immune from that. And the problem is that people feel, uh, you know, obliged to praise mediocrity in the name of patriotism, which is what, uh, which is what concerns me. Because if you praise mediocrity, then how will any improvement or any healthy change come about? People who are mediocre will continue doing mediocre stuff because they're being placed with the skies. And if you point out the flaws or you point out that there, there are some issues here, then you are immediately deemed to be unpatriotic. What do you think can be done about it? I think what we need to do is to start speaking the truth and, and take a, look, a, a good long look at ourselves in the mirror and see where are we making the mistakes and where, where are we uh, suffering and where are we uh, not seeing uh, where the gaps are. And uh, for example, I, I like to give you an example here. Now, when I say that to my friends in the creative arts, I myself, I'm an author and I've been uh, writing and I've been a journalist. And every time I point out this, uh, they tell me that, oh, you know, Pakistan, you know how it is, things, things are here. There's so many curves, there's so, there's so many problems. Um, so I tell them, look at Iran, look at our neighbor. We yeah. do not have the kind of censorship they have and look at the award-winning films and plays and short films, like even a minute long film of theirs is like stunning in its impact. They win awards everywhere. And this even have films and plays that are set in like two rooms. Uh, the entire action revolves on two rooms. It's not like a, you don't need a massive uh, current Joha kind of set to make an amazing film. You can have it, but it is the, it's the writing that is suffering. I think we have a problem with our screenwriters. We have a problem with our plots. Our characters, there's no depth. If you look back at our plays from the past, people do talk about that, you know, plays like TV plays, like Hasina Moin's plays. Yeah. Um, they're, they're, uh, all these plays, I mean, they had amazing uh, plots. They had believable characters, realistic characters. You don't have realistic characters now. There's no interest in exploring the depth of characters nowadays. So it shows in our writing. I think the basic problem is in our writing. I feel our Pakistani writers, because I'm also an author, so I, I noticed this. We, have, we, we become lazy. We just use uh, things that sell uh, something is sensationalist. We use terrorism as a crutch to hang our book on, books on, or our plays on, or our films on. I mean, uh, you see, you see Pakistani films. Uh, I I had the unfortunate experience of going and seeing Sushis, and I was just uh, pulled along my friends and family to see them. And people were praising them the skies. And I said, I asked one of the film critics who used to work with me. I said, How on earth did you give this film such a brilliant rating? And he said, Oh, you have to do this. Uh, it's a terrible film. If you had asked me directly, I would have told you that. But we. Have have to do this because you know we are friends with the celebrities and the actors and actresses so there's a kind of dishonesty going on here as well you know you're friends with people so you praise their products you're not being honest so you think there's a system of patronage of course there is it's okay. everywhere in pakistan and, and literary arts is not immune from that having said that there are some people like a few standard bearers of excellence there's shima kirmani uh, like we had talked earlier, there's Jamal Shah. Uh, there are some other people who are doing very good work, but they're just like drops in the ocean. You know, uh, I, I think I feel uh, when we look at the creative arts, when you look at creative people, we can do so much more and it's not being done, unfortunately. And they just make excuses. And we have terrible writers. Look at our films. Look at their plots. They're terrible. I, I had a bad experience of seeing a, uh, recently seeing a film, like maybe a few months ago. The film was built as an homage to Quentin Tarantino, who would be horrified to know that he's being used 
as you know the as inspiration was it was like a distortion of everything that Quentin Tarantino stands for so nothing made sense in the movie everything was like totally out of sync and yet critics were you know saying that brilliant film and it's an experiment uh, you know it's something innovative but innovative also means good right uh, innovative, yeah. innovative doesn't mean you don't be innovative and and turn out trash uh, so i feel that we are really suffering with creativity is concerned in pakistan and we can use creativity with social change we can do so much with uh, the arts so it's really unfortunate mahin but we've also had blockbusters such as mala jat you've also you know if you look back in retrospect you've had some brilliant movies as well i mean uh, i do understand where your sentiment is coming from and it's based on objectivity and i agree with you because it's yeah. based on facts and you know all sorts of realities that we see it's based on empirical evidence if you want to call it that but there've also been some outstanding movies as well with some great scripts with some great writing ability and with some great characters as well what do you have to say about them i'm not saying that good films are not made once in a while they are made but the problem is that if we as a nation are dishonest about praising mediocrity in the name of art because we say oh we pakistani and this is a pakistani film or pakistani play we have to praise it i don't understand this concept I, 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 if you don't if you are honest about what a kind of a film that is and i blame the film critics also our film critics they very they're not being honest uh, i think they have friendships with the actors and actresses celebrities that's what my film critic friend said uh well you know i have to go to the premiere i need to get invited here i need to go there so how can i give a very honest opinion about the film and that itself tells you the sad state of affairs with our work at, at newspapers and you know being a journalist so i know what happens behind the scenes so i feel that is something that we need to address and creativity and art is a great medium for uh, bringing about change in thought and narratives and you know social change and betterment of society there's so many look look there's so many topics we can explore but we have the same old um you know same old storyline every film and and every day let's talk about tv plays look how atrocious they are uh, some many of my friends watch tv plays and they keep telling me see this play or see that play literally i can't go beyond one or two episodes is a terrible and uh, i don't I, if i i just see it on youtube or something so i can forward all the awful parts but i just have my friends so no, i can't bear this it. is decimating my remaining neurons <laughs> i feel dumber okay. i think okay. it's frankly speaking i think the dumbing down of the nation by showing such plays i was interviewed somebody who was heading a channel and she was a very dynamic lady and i said to her she was you know talking about women empowerment and i said to her but what about your plays this is not what you show in your plays and he said no 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 uh, well my uh, heroine did get beaten up but in the end she slapped the hero i said yeah after like 35 episodes so what kind of a message are you giving to the girls of today and what kind of message are you giving to the men you're normalizing violence and right at the end of you say oh it's not right and you know the, the man should you know he's told off or he slapped or something when it's too late uh, once i interviewed hasina moin and asked her why you're not writing plays nowadays for tv and he said she said look at the what what passes for uh, creativity nowadays i can't do that so i said to her okay so what's the difference between your heroines and the heroines of today in tv plays the heroines of today she said they are they are suffering constantly my heroines were solution oriented they had problems but they thought of a solution and they went ahead and they fixed the problem on their own they didn't wait for a messiah and so that is a crucial difference are uh, not able to do things on their own they need the heroes to sort things out for them there are very few plays in which this show the woman actually uh, you know an educated woman actually standing up for herself or a woman going for education they don't show that in plays unfortunately yeah i mean i mean i i just don't mean to inflame you know your sentiment but you know there there was obviously a lot of castigation and censure directed at they have been and the fact uh, that uh, domestic violence was pretty much normalized over there <laughs> and yeah. they received a significant amount yes. of backlash in pakistani social media circles so i mean uh, that just that just buttresses your point that, that that is definitely a problem and to try and make sure that you want to rectify that you need to come up with scripts which are more robust and characters which have more impact as compared to somebody who suffers yeah. domestic violence for as you said for like the uh, you know 15 years or maybe 10 years or 5 years and then eventually she stands up for herself so that's pretty much there so my mean let's talk about creativity and arts to stimulate yeah. when, you, when you go to europe you go to yeah. the united states so yeah, even ahead, if you go to a city like karachi or you go to rawalpindi you go to lahore you do see the impact of graffiti on social consciousness um do you think that uh, you know people who come up with graffiti are actually innovative and creative and they deserve a higher platform because they're actually rebelling against the established status quo 
or do you think that um, you know there needs to be more you could say it's it's more to do with elitism or this elite capture in art and the creative industry which is hampering social thought in pakistan yeah i think uh, i think all forms of creative expression are great uh, except that sometimes i feel that some artists who come up with so called installations at museums which absolutely make no sense like somebody actually there was a exhibit i remember uh, recently of a banana that was the exhibit at the installation and somebody some visitor went and ate the banana and then they were upset they said that was our installation so sometimes okay. artists do do these crazy things right and so i i feel all forms of artistic expression are just yourself in any way whether it's in your attire if you want to you know paint yourself and be creative there there are times you see people in the us and who are who have amazing you know face paint or jewelry on it and they look like they look like artistic installations themselves so it totally depends on you and now recently i tell you my, uh, an example of uh, what i mean uh, i saw recently saw the film barbie but when i saw the film i found it very interesting because it was actually it's not just about a doll it's about a feminist narrative and it's written by a a, a female screenwriter along with her husband i think uh, greta and she's written a beautiful film i was really impressed and uh, there were little girls in the cinema who were who were coming back with uh, notions of patriarchy and how uh, how men suppress women and how women can stand up for themselves and how a woman can be happy on her own without having a ken in her life you know uh, so i mean it was very interesting and they were talking about finding yourself all these uh, interesting themes so you see they use this film as a way for little girls and for women to think about themselves in their place in society uh, for example they had um, Uh, a corporate uh, meeting and uh, it was about ma- it was metal uh, which is the uh, manufacturer who which makes barbie dolls yeah, and when yeah, uh, yeah. barbie actually goes in and wants to meet the female see they're all men there are no females and she said where are the females uh, there are 15 men sitting there talking about barbie dolls and she said where are the females and he said oh there was a female ceo in the 1980s uh, so there are no females so one of the men who sitting there said well i am a man who has no power do i qualify as a woman so i found that very interesting you know the kind yeah, of dialogues yeah. you can put the kind of script you can put to make people think uh, so my nieces went for the movie and they came back really thinking and and they got food for thought and people kids who were as young as 7 and 8 they were talking about this right so you can influence uh, uh, that's that is what i'm saying in our plays and our films what is being normalized it's it's a patriarchal notion of how women should behave or the same old hackneyed scripts so we get used to it you know you get used to the same diet of rubbish being fed to us and then we become dumb as a result and also i noticed one thing that even in the creative arts uh, in pakistan there are times when you're not free to express yourself fully so people get very angry uh, if they feel the writer is not they also ask me are you a supporter of this of people's party are you not a supporter oh then you must be a supporter nawaz sharif oh you must be a supporter imran khan i said why do you have to be a supporter of any party why can't you be objective and i said i wrote about him because he's a former prime minister of the country so i feel there's a lot of division in pakistan and it excess is it's being exacerbated every day even if you go abroad people are obsessed with this uh, with these divisions and uh, so i feel that this is something that's also reflected in the creative arts unfortunately uh, so people who support a certain ideology they only want to write about that uh, there's no objectivity i feel um, so if i i wrote the story as an objective observer of that time uh, based on my research and, and media i've done research i made a documentary on uh, zulfiqar ali bhutto was his hanging a judicial murder and i didn't know anything about that at that time because we are not taught about this in our history books so yeah, i did my research yeah. talk to my father i spoke to people who lived during that time i spoke to fakhruddin ji ibrahim and i i learned a lot i did another documentary on separation of east pakistan again we are not taught this in our history books i had no idea what had happened in east pakistan and i said to my uh, boss at that time that i don't know anything about this and he said well find out he gave they gave me 3 weeks and so i read the hamudur rahman commission report i read many other things i talked to people i got an understanding of this so you see we don't look at our history we don't even learn from it we for, I, i think in pakistan we have short term memory loss so every uh, two weeks there's a there's a different scandal or there's something that distracts us it's like wag the dog yeah forget about 10 years ago we forget what happened two weeks ago when i was media i would ask my media friends what happened about that case why aren't you focusing on that like what is and i said Yeah, that's what are. they say so we keep repeating the same mistakes again and again and the same thing ha- is reflected in the arts we keep making the same mistakes we write terrible scripts we have one dimensional characters we have the same hackney situations we have the same songs you know uh, the, is the same thing in every film is very unrealistic 
I mean, you do want a, a dose of escapism. I understand that, but it should be realistic in in certain degree. It should make you think at least. So when you when I leave the theater after seeing a Pakistani film, with the exception of maybe Mola Jat, which is actually a really good film, I really like that. I just say, oh my God, what was that trash? And if I put if if I hadn't paid for the ticket, I probably would have just left much earlier. So, Mahim, when we talk about, for example, that there's one very interesting aspect about this entire discussion is that a lot of Indians are actually going to pounce on this conversation and be like, okay, fine. Well, you see, uh, Pakistanis themselves are castigating their own movies and scripts and you know their, their dramas and their film industry for that matter. So, what would your message be to them that maybe you know they should take care of their own business? Because if you take a look at Bollywood in general, you do have a few good, very good movies, but you have quite a few abysmal ones as well. Yeah, of course. Uh, well, look, uh, in India sometimes once in a blue moon makes a good film. I wouldn't say that their films are uniformly good. Uh, some of them, uh, maybe films in a season Shah in it or uh, films that, uh, for example, one film that I thought we saw some time back, which I was really stunned by, was Masan. And it, it had, a, I think, Vicky Kaushal probably it was his debut movie. It yeah, was a very yeah, good yeah. film. It was a dark film, but very interesting. Uh, so it was done by, I think. Um, Varun Grover, uh, who is, uh, uh, I think that's his name. He's a, he's a stand-up comedian. Also, he's a great satirist and he writes beautiful scripts. So he wrote that. So, but see now, the, such people are actually stepping forward and writing something. So where are our uh, script writers like these? So I feel like India's concerned, of course, they can comment on our films. That's fine. We can comment on their films. I think there should be freedom of expression from both sides uh, be honest and look at look at yourself critically that's how you'll improve that's how you learn otherwise you'll never learn you just keep going backward so yeah. i think and that applies to uh you also as a creative person myself also uh, i also look at myself critically and uh, maybe i look at my book and i say okay next book i write will be even better than this the characters will be even better i have greater ideas so uh, you know i hold myself to the same critical self-evaluation that i would hold a film or a play or anything written by anybody else. And there are times when I get used to get confused in Pakistan because there were like on my Facebook such great praise for an amazing book by a Pakistani fiction writer. And I used to go get the book and it was so terrible. I would just read two or three chapters. And I said, oh my God, what is this? I can't stand it. And I thought maybe something is wrong with me. And then I asked one or two of my friends and one of them was honest enough and she said, oh my God, is, you also hate the book? Actually, it's a terrible book. I said, why is it being praised to the sky? She said, oh, because, you know, they have connections. They know the publishers. You know, their friends are celebrities. So I was like, I don't understand this. And then how will we, I mean, you're just fooling the public by saying this, right? And the public is falling for it. I mean, I fell for it and bought the book. But now I'm more circumspect. <laughs> I just pick up the book at, at a stall or something, go through the first chapter and see it's interesting and engaging enough or not. So I think, uh, yeah, I think creativity and the arts can be used as a great uh, medium for change and you know you have iran you have many other countries who are doing that you also have the movie oppenheimer which I haven't seen as yet and they're looking yeah. at their past they're looking at the nuclear bomb the mistakes they made i haven't seen the movie so i cannot comment on it but these kind of films are not made in pakistan we don't look at our history so why not look at our history why not uh, pick up events from our past and make movies around them why not do screen adaptations like we used to have um, you know, I think the past Ira Kazmi and also do like, you know, Iron Van the Fountainhead. Now we don't have anything like this. We have the same or we have the same like, you know, Urdu Digest writers writing scripts based on the, the you know, you know, I don't know. I don't know how to describe the Urdu Digest kind of thing, which are all full of romance and nothing. Based and there's their, no message there. You know, personal experiences or maybe construction of society or construction of reality. Maybe that's the way to put it. Or, 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 or they failed, failed love affairs or, you know, their bitterness comes through in the, in, I mean, once in a while it's okay, but every script shouldn't be like that. I think we are lazy as a nation. We just tend to jump up on the bandwagon and, oh, this script worked. This play works, so let's write a play very similar to this. Because of all, you know, TRPs and ratings and battles. So we basically don't care about standard of the play. We just care about the TRP and the market rating. You don't care about the criticism. So you talk about theory bin, well, who cares? Even though that scenes were problematic, they got great market ratings. They made a lot of money. People still tuned yeah. in. They complained, but they still tuned in. So that's all that the channel cares about if you take away their business by not tuning in that's when they will care but you don't do that you still watch it and you critique it and you go on and on but you still keep watching so it's like it's like 
looking to the eyes of a cobra. You can't look away, you know. But if, if you just accept w- things the way they are, then they'll never change, right? Fahin Osmani, journalist and author, thank you so, so much for joining me on the show. So, yeah. All right, so that's all that we have for now on Islamabad today for Think Tech Hawaii. This was Hamza Refa the Stand. You can follow us on our social media pages and you'll give your feedback on this episode. Until next time, take care. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.